Hi everyone, I'm Michelle with the Sleep Coach School and I'm here with a Talking Insomnia episode. And today I'm here with Jen. Hi Jen, thanks so much for joining hey. us. Today. Thanks for having me. Of course, we've been trying to uh, get you on for a Talking Insomnia episode for a little while. So I was really excited that we were able to, to find this time to connect today. Me too. <laughs> Perfect. So with that, let's jump right in. Um, Jen, I really wanted to start by asking you a little bit about your own insomnia journey and how your insomnia started and kind of what it what did it look like for you? Um, well, it kind of happened out of nowhere. I have never had any sleep issues in my entire life. In fact, I my family would comment like that I slept too much like <laughs> growing up and in my teens and my twenties. Um, in fact, like I felt like I was napping and sleeping all the time through the night. Never had an issue ever. Um, too good at sleeping. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it was very strange when this all happened. Um, I ended up going through like a really stressful time in my life. Um, I have, um, multiple sclerosis and there was like a lapse in my medication due to some insurance issues and things like that. And I read that the particular medication I was on, if you um, just suddenly stopped taking it, that you could have like a horrible relapse and end up like bedridden. So I obsessed over that and I went down this rabbit hole and I was just in this constant anxiety state. And um, just because of that, um, it just like triggered something within me that I've never experienced before. Mm -hmm. Um, and I started not sleeping and it started out, I just had these hypnic jerks one night and then I became obsessed with those because they were terrifying. You know, you get to a point where you're just like about to cross over that brink from wakefulness to sleep and you just jerk awake and it just kept happening over and over again. It wouldn't stop. And, um, it just freaked me out. Um, so then the next night when it happened, I freaked out even more. So I just went down this huge, long, terrifying rabbit hole of trying to figure out what they were and thinking something was wrong with me um, and looking up all this advice about uh, how to sleep. Um, and it was the classic stuff that you get, like take melatonin and, um, you know, track your sleep with an app or, um, you know, take a nice relaxing bath. So um, funny enough, early on, like I had contacted um, my neurologist because mm -hmm. we had stuff going on with the um, medication for the MS and it was her nurse who suggested that it might be anxiety. Mm. And um, I kind of was like, I accepted that from her, you know, I took that advice, but I was just like, also thinking, no way, how could this be anxiety? This has got to be something else. You know, right. I thought it might have been connected to my MS for a while. I, you know, there was nothing suggesting that. That was just me um, going down that rabbit hole either even further. So um, they actually diagnosed me, or excuse me, they didn't diagnose me. They uh, prescribed clonopin. Yeah. And um, they gave me seven days. I took that. And then I had called back like after hours and was talking to the on-call doctor. And he was like, listen, don't take this stuff for very long. If you can get addicted, you're, you'll have withdrawals. You try to get off of it. If you've been on it too long. So that terrified me too. But I was also like, yeah, I'm not going to take this stuff um, for very long. So out of like 37 pills that a week and a month prescribed to me, um, I took about 15 of the pills total. And I was just like, mm. but it, it did help a couple nights to get me through that major anxiety I was going through. Um, I went to my regular doctor. He suggested I go to see a sleep specialist. So I did one of those sleep studies where they strap the thing to your head and all that stuff. And surprisingly, I slept pretty well that night. That's and, the surprise. Maybe the pressure is off in those situations. Right. You don't thinking there's no way I'm sleeping. In this. Yeah. So um, I didn't even have any of those jerks that night. So he didn't even see what I was trying to like <laughs> tell them about. And um, he had no idea, by the way, what I was talking about when I mentioned those jerks, like the sleep doctor who had 20 really? years of experience. He, wow. if he 
if he did hear about them, he did not share any of that knowledge with me or what to do about them. He um, just, he, uh, excuse me, we did the sleep study and then he said that everything looked normal. I had great sleep cycles and everything throughout the night was fine. And um, that was good. You know, I was glad he didn't find anything, but at the same time, I was like, why am I having these jerks? You know, um, that was a huge part for me, those jerks, um, because sometimes they would last all night long. And, yeah. and then the next night. Um, but I started addressing my anxiety. That's what I really started focusing on and um, came across a lot of bad information there. Um, I went to, I saw a naturopathic doctor for a while and um, she's great. She really is. And I believe a lot of her advice is good, but ultimately I think um, some of the stuff was not helpful in my case. I think it actually made me um, kind of focus on the wrong thing and um, just, it wasn't ultimately what helped me. So I also saw, because I tell you, I was freaking out at this point. I tend to catastrophize. That's one of my issues when I get really worked up about something. And um, I talked to a counselor at BetterHelp. And she actually, this was early on, she actually said, hey, when you have those jerks, why don't you just kind of brush it off? You mm. know? And I thought that was the worst advice at the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that sounds like terrible advice, right? It's norm. Right. But ultimately, mm -hmm. I tell you, that's actually what helps, you know? So, but at the time I was like, no, she needs to be teaching me something else. There's got to be something <laughs> better than this, you know? Um, but so that was, um, that was, it all started in early April, 2020, when all this stuff happened. And I just went from like doctor to doctor and therapist to, you know, naturopathic doctor. I bought, um, this really expensive, um, thing called an alpha stem that you like electrodes on your ears supposed to help with anxiety, depression, and insomnia. Um, I, oh man, I went through so many herbs. <laughs> But, yeah, we love we all do that, right? <laughs> herbs. <laughs> um, it was just crazy. I was doing these mixtures of herbs, trying to see if those would help. Teas. Um, I bought those light blocking glasses, um, uh, yeah. the like amber colored ones. Mm -hmm. The so what are they? Blue yeah. Light. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And I was like having to like go to bed at an exact time and like no leeway there and certain routines I did. And it was driving me crazy to tell you the truth. So what were some of your routines at the time? Um, mostly just taking those herbs and supplements at the exact time and drinking a specific amount of tea and, um, trying to listen to like relaxing music and, um, making sure that I took a bath at or a shower at a certain time. Um, it was just a lot. Yeah. Well, that sounds, yeah, I, I read that resonates with me so much. And, you know, we hear this so much from the insomnia community is that we all develop all these, um, you know, routines and, uh, you know, hygiene and sleep efforts, all these things that we're trying to control and build around our sleep. And of course it doesn't work, but we just go deeper and deeper down that route typically as time goes by. I know I did as well. Mm -hmm. And um, when you were talking about your, the jerks, the hypnic jerks that you were experiencing, that really, um, you know, really reminds me a lot of my experience as well. I had a lot of twitching, like sleep onset twitching and hypnic jerks and, just like you were describing, it's it's a scary part of all this because um, very few people really understand what those are. In my case, nobody understood. It sounds similar in your case. Not even the sleep uh, doctor at your sleep study could give you guidance around that. And I was in the same boat. And you know, I I really started to convince myself my brain would, is was broken that I had some sort of brain damage. Is that something that you were fearful of as well because of these jerks? 
Um, well, definitely, I thought it was something to do with possible um, MS situation going on. Um, but then I kind of ruled that out just um, through talking with my doctor and stuff. But um, I thought there must be something wrong, like with my body that it wasn't functioning correctly. And in my brain, like that, like a switch was malfunctioning or yeah. something. Um, I also, at one point I got into the whole spiritual side of stuff and nothing wrong with that. But um, like <laughs> I started talking with these people on a Facebook group and there was someone who had actually mentioned that um, they weren't calling them hypnic jerks, but they were describing what a hypnic jerk is. And someone actually said, oh, that's your body just trying to have a, you know, an astral projection. And oh, <laughs> that probably made it worse. <laughs> yeah, I thought, is that what's happening? You know, for a second I entertained that, but ultimately I didn't really that but i'm just thinking you know people are out there telling people that that's what's going on you know because no um, one really like talks about it very much because a lot of people don't ever experience them mm -hmm. not to the point that it causes an issue anyway yeah no exactly and what's interesting is once you kind of enter the insomnia or sleep uh space or especially in the community that daniel's built you know, we, it's, it's talked about quite frequently, but outside of that, we don't really talk about it a lot. And I think a lot of the doctors that we go to see when we're struggling, even sleep doctors like you saw, don't really know about them very much um, or maybe brush them off. But it's really such a significant issue because, because we don't talk about it when it's happening, we become very scared as to what could be possibly causing this strange symptom, kind of like not sleeping is one thing, but I'm having these jerks. And what if that's something different, mm -hmm. or problematic? Right. So I, I really, really understand that. Um, one thing that you said that I thought was really interesting is at some point you said you started to um, address the anxiety, like your anxiety around sleep. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was so intuitive that you started to do that because so many of us, myself included, I didn't consider that anxiety was playing a role in any of my insomnia um, for, I mean, for years, probably until I really found Daniel. I certainly didn't think it was at the root of my anxiety. I, I knew I was experiencing anxiety because of the sleeplessness, but I didn't think that anxiety was at the root of the problem. So I'm curious, you, when you mentioned you started to address anxiety, it was. Be, did you have an intuitive sense of the fact that maybe anxiety was actually driving this process or was it more to cope with the anxiety being caused by the insomnia? I think once I found Daniel's channel and started watching more of that, it really started clicking. I had been told, you know, early on by the nurse to my neurologist that it was probably an anxiety issue. And even the better help counselor that I was talking to, you know, all that stuff. So it all started to kind of come full circle and make sense. And that's when I'm like, yeah, this is, this has got to be an anxiety issue. And I, I think it is, you know, like I didn't, cause when I go to bed, I'm tired. It's never, I'm just laying there because I just don't feel tired or mm -hmm. um, it's, I'm always tired. And it was always just those hypnic jerks that would keep me awake. So, and um, I learned that that's a hyper, hyper arousal within your body. Um, and um, since I've been kind of using that whole NATO approach and, um, and also watching other um, like podcasts and things like that about anxiety specifically, um, it has helped tremendously. So mm. and that makes that makes so much sense. Um, so I'm curious, how did you find uh, how did you find Daniel and how did you find the Sleep Coach School? Um, I actually went to YouTube and typed in "hypnic jerk" and oh, okay. one of his videos popped up. And um, that's when I just started watching him. And I also started watching Martin Reed mm -hmm. a little bit as well. Daniel resonated with me a little bit more, just his style of um, things he says and everything. Um, but Martin's information was very good as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how I found him. That's great. Um, really glad that you found him. Um, and I'm curious, what was it about the teachings? So Daniel's teachings and the teachings that you were learning through the channel, 
that kind of resonated with you more than all the other stuff that you had tried? It's really that NATO approach, 100%. Um, I think for me, like I know there's a lot where um, people talk about all of the routines and stuff like that and making sure you're not doing those. Ultimately, to me, you can still do all that stuff if you want to drink that tea, if you want to take that, but you have to do it in a way that's not so desperate, that mm -hmm. you're calm and you can pretty much do whatever you want to do. Um, as long as you approach it with, um, you know, not being attached to the outcome. And like Sasha Stevens says, which I think about a lot, um, is let everything be okay. Mm. And, um, so, yeah, I think it's that NATO approach. No, I love that. I love Sasha Stevens as well. And um, I'm curious if you started to have an experience similar to mine with my twitching and jerks where almost immediately when I would start to react to them with more acceptance and with calm, uh, even welcoming them, I actually started to see in the moment the kind of amplitude or the intensity of the jerks and um, jerks and twitching start to subside a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. And that was really a, a strange experience. It was very eye opening for me, very impactful. And I thought, oh, there's something to this. My, my own panic reactions are resulting in more and more jerks and twitches, not just over time, but even in the moment. Did you have a similar experience with that where when you started to apply the teachings um, and maybe kind of caring a little bit less in the moment or having that acceptance that you noticed, oh, my jerks are getting a little bit better. Or what, what was that like for you? Uh, pretty much how you described it. Um, it. It has taken some time and I'm still going through the journey a little bit. I still have them every now and then, uh, particularly on really stressful days. Um, and so, yeah, and sometimes just out of the blue, but it's just um, the way I react to them now. I'm not going to lie. Like sometimes it really frustrates me, um, especially if it's been like weeks where I haven't had any or in, I've had several months where I haven't had any. But um, when they do happen now, typically it's just I'll have a night or it might just be in the very first stage of falling asleep and then they'll pass instead of going on all night. Um, but there are those occasional nights where they happen. Um, but yeah, just approaching them with acceptance. acceptance, And it's, um, I think that's one of the hard things people struggle with too. Like this is such a horrible thing. How do we accept it? I think yeah. it's more of um, a, a tolerance rather than an acceptance. Like it's like, okay, come at me, do your thing. This is, it is what it is. Yeah. I'm just going to, lay here and see what happens and um and you'll get the racing heart and the um maybe some tingling and stuff but just kind of um to use a claire weeks term float through it um it's helped a lot and like i said they've dissipated it's not nearly as bad as it was mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love how you brought up that tolerance, the idea of tolerance, maybe almost as a precursor to being able to accept. Mm -hmm. um, because maybe sometimes that acceptance piece feels like a, a bridge too far. And so uh, I love that idea of, you know what, maybe we start off with just tolerating this because very likely the old pattern was to really resist and fight against or maybe be in panic in response. So I think that's a really great point. Can we just start to, to tolerate and kind of be okay? And then maybe from there, we can start to move towards uh, full acceptance, but that that's a really nice um, idea. And I could see how that would be really, really helpful for the community watching is can we start it at tolerance? Because that that alone is a really big shift, I think. Definitely. Mm -hmm. for sure. It took me a while to get there, but um, I think the, the more you practice it, you know, the easier it gets. So. Mm -hmm. And that's what you just said. The more you practice, the easier it gets. Um, that is the, such a huge part of all of this and the, and the teachings um, through this three, through the sleep coach school because it's kind of the opposite of a quick fix, right? It's mm -hmm. working on the mind. It's working on acceptance and all these things. And oftentimes, you know, some of our students will describe um, this process where at first they 
are intellectually starting to learn and become more educated on insomnia and on sleep. And slowly over time, they find like, you know, they describe a moment where kind of maybe suddenly it feels like it clicked, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And that experience is a little bit different for everyone. So I'm curious to ask you, did you feel like you had a moment where the teachings sort of clicked with you or became more internalized? And if so, what did that look like for you? Um, again, it's back to the NATO thing. Um, and I think it was really when Sasha Stevens came on the channel and she was describing the let everything be okay. And I just, I don't know, even though I had been hearing it before that, it I just internalized it and it really just um, made a lot of sense. And I know she, someone had asked the question because Daniel had asked her the question on that particular episode, like, how do you do that? And she really didn't have an answer. Um, so I actually started um, reading more about anxiety itself rather than just uh, insomnia or sleep issues. And that also helped me, you know, have that aha moment where I really grasped the concept. Mm -hmm. um, so I think for people who, recognize that it's an anxiety issue and they want to address the anxiety as well and want to learn more about how do you let everything be okay. Um, I actually started um, watching and listening to a podcast called The Anxious Truth by Drew Lynn Salata, I think is how you say his last name, but um, He's really great. He doesn't really talk about sleep a whole lot, but you can apply the same things to sleep. And it's, it's what Daniel says as well with the not being attached to the outcome. And um, a lot of his stuff is based off of Claire Weeks teachings and just basically doesn't sugarcoat anything at all, which I love. It's all about, you know, just letting it happen to you, accepting it, tolerating it. Um, you know, it's like someone coming at you and punching you and you just kind of let them punch you and until they get bored and walk away, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, that was kind of when everything clicked. It, it wasn't just like a one big moment. I mean, it kind of was like, oh yeah, I'm starting to get it. But then I had to kind of um, research and get into the in uh, whole anxiety side of it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. And do you feel like you had to really be implementing it in your life in the moment that night for a period of time for it to become a little bit more internalized as well? Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, because what started as this big stressful event that ended up in this whole insomnia experience, I ended up just kind of feeling anxious all the time, which was something I hadn't experienced before. I've always been an overthinker and a perfectionist and kind of stress out and catastrophize a little bit, but not to the point where I had an anxiety dis disorder or disordered anxiety. It was normal anxiety, but it became something much bigger that I needed to address. Mm -hmm. No, I had, I had a very similar experience where I had I certainly had had anxiety beforehand. And like you described, I was a perfectionist and overthinker, but all of a sudden the anxiety became really overwhelming um, pretty much all the time during the day and during the night. And it really kind of makes you look at it more, um, more head on than before. I think it almost forces you to look at the anxiety, whereas before you could kind of push it to the background a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I love that. And I love that you mentioned some anxiety resources that you really, really loved. Um, I think you mentioned Claire Weeks, who's mm -hmm. amazing, and um, Sasha Stevens, who's wonderful as well. And Daniel actually has a really great podcast that he did with Sasha Stevens that you that you mentioned. And I loved that one as well. That was very impactful, uh, very impactful one to watch. Uh, for, for those of you listening, if you haven't checked out that one, uh, definitely search uh, search for Sasha Stevens, and it's a really great conversation. And I want to uh, just get the name of the podcast that you mentioned that you found really, really helpful for, for anxiety. Was it The Anxious Truth? Yes, I have it written down. The Anxious Truth and the guy who runs the whole thing, he even wrote a book by the same name, um, is Drew Linsalata. 
Okay. Um, and there's also a Facebook forum by the same name too, and an Instagram account too. But yeah, no, I love that. <laughs> That's very helpful because I think sometimes we can. It's helpful to pull in additional resources on anxiety during our journey. During our journey, and the more we can learn about our own anxiety and why this is happening and how to approach it, I think the more helpful. Uh, it is also for our, our insomnia journey as well. So it kind of it kind of all connects. And one thing I wanted to ask you is, you know, if right now you could go back to yourself while you were struggling, kind of in the worst place of your insomnia struggle, what would you say to that version of you, knowing what you know now? Um, I really wish I would have just chilled out a little bit more, um, like. <laughs> Don't freak out so much. You know, th everything's going to be okay. Just relax. Well, that's hard to do. You can't really just tell somebody to relax. <laughs> but um, just, uh, I really wish I had listened to people a little bit earlier on who were saying that it was probably an anxiety issue because I really focused on it being something I could fix with herbs and routines and stuff like that way too much. Um, it caused me... Uh, way more just anxiety in general just trying to address it that way so um yeah i would just tell myself to maybe listen to those people when they were saying it was connected to the anxiety <laughs> yeah, that resonates with uh, me as well i i had uh, an acupuncturist who i was going to probably twice a week for stress and uh and for insomnia and I remember her saying to me, you know, you don't have a sleep problem. You have an anxiety problem. And I remember my thinking was, well, of course I'm anxious. I'm not sleeping. Mm -hmm. I was frustrated by her kind of saying that, you know, this, well, well, no, I have a sleep problem. I have a very serious sleep problem. And so I was almost a bit resentful towards her brushing that off and saying, you don't, you know, your problem isn't with sleep, it's with anxiety. And she said that to me several times and each time, I interpreted it as, you know, no, like you're completely off base. Yeah, like, you think they're crazy when they you say don't that. listen. You're just like, well, but my, of course I'm anxious. I haven't slept in days, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of mentality. Whereas I was really missing what she was saying. And I, I mean, who knows? Maybe I wouldn't have been open enough to hear it at that point. That's another thing. Um, and for whatever reason, when I found Daniel's channel was when I really started to um, kind of open up to the idea of, oh, wait a minute, this is all anxiety. Like this is the core of it. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, and yeah, I have the same, same experiences where other practitioners were trying to tell me, you need to look at the anxiety as opposed to the sleep. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I resonate with that feeling of, oh, I wish I could go back a couple years or whatever timeline and maybe listen to the message a little bit more. But I think we all have to be in the right place or the right state of mind to be ready to open up ourselves to really what's happening. Yeah, I think what a lot of people, I know for myself, I was looking for such a quick fix. Like there's got to be something, there's got to be a pill I can take, there's got to be something. And unfortunately, when dealing with um, sleep anxiety or an anxiety disorder in general, it takes time. You have to retrain your amygdala to respond differently you know and it just takes time that's exactly it and that's the that's a hard part about all of this is that time and repetition is really kind of a required piece of all this which is hard when you're struggling um and what is it that claire weeks says she she says just allow more time to pass is that one of yes. the things that she says just kind of keep doing keep floating as she would say keep floating and and just allow more time to pass and uh I love that book as well. And that that terminology, that way of putting it helped me at the time. So, okay, I have to just keep doing what I'm doing. And uh, so I'm glad that you did because that's a very difficult part about all of this is actually surrendering to the fact that we don't know how long it's going to take. Mm -hmm. and being okay with that or at least tolerating that. Probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So... Throughout your entire journey, all the ups and downs and everything that you've learned about 
anxiety and about sleep and about yourself. I'm curious if your insomnia journey and everything you've learned has actually impacted your broader life outside of sleep. Yeah, I think um, a silver lining of it all is I, um, I think I've learned to just not take things so seriously, like things um, like for when, for an example, um, I would stress out about things at work and um, I still do a great job. I'm still successful. I still want to be the best I can be. But instead of freaking out about deadlines and things, I just kind of take it in stride now. I just, you know, I kind of apply that same concept about letting everything be okay and um, just kind of accepting it is what it is. Um, so I, I've applied that to just my life in general, um, just not freaking out about things as much as I may have done in the past. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really great. And I think, you know, your experience is also similar to so many of uh, the other students' experiences and mine as well, where once you have kind of come to the other end of the insomnia, that you can kind of look back and in hindsight see that there were some, I think you mentioned silver linings or some gifts that came along with the the struggle of it and the, well, the whole journey of, of going through it. And uh, I think it's always helpful when we can come out of something that is as difficult as insomnia and see that it's actually helped shape ourselves and our lives in, in, in an actual positive way. So it's really great that you've been able to have that experience as well and to share that to the community. I think we'll give them a lot of hope to hear that. Um, yeah. yeah, and it's hard to see that when you're in it. And I really do think that it comes later. It, it's something that comes further further down on the journey, but that that's okay. And that that's something that can be waiting for all of us. Right. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It, it took a while to get to that point of finding anything good in it because I just thought it sucked a lot for a long time. <laughs> so. It really does. It's because it does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hard. Yeah. No, that's so great. Well, Jenna, I love chatting with you today. This was really great. Uh, thanks so much for, for joining the podcast and sharing your story. I know it's going to help so many people to be able to hear your journey and to hear what it was like for you. So many people are going to be able to learn from it. So thanks again for, for joining me today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. All right. All right. Until next time, everyone. Take care.